Gentlemen, my next guest tonight is a pastor, politician, and author who currently serves as a United States senator from Georgia. Please welcome Senator Raphael Warnock. <laughs> Senator, thank you for being here. Sounds like my church on a Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah. You describe yourself as a senator, not as a senator who used to be a pastor, but a pastor in the Senate. Y you, uh, are you still pastor at Ebenezer Baptist? Yes, I preach every Sunday. Okay. You're a senator and you go home and preach. Now, yeah. this, this is the church for people who don't know where Martin Luther King was co-pastor. Right. What does it mean to you to go back there every Sunday and to preach from that pulpit? Well, as I said, I, I wanted to go to Dr. King's school. I didn't know I'd become the pastor of his church. And so it's a real honor uh, to preach there every Sunday. And it is part of what keeps me grounded in the Senate. The, the last thing I want to do is talk to politicians all the time. I'm afraid I might accidentally become one. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, uh, I, I was in the airport the other day, and, and this woman, she recognized me, but she didn't know why. And finally, she said, are you a politician? I said, I sure hope not. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in elected office, um, but I, I want to remain a, a public servant who serves in the office. And when I'm on the floor of the Senate trying to reduce the cost of insulin, I have an insulin bill which would reduce people's out-of-pocket costs to $35 per month per individual. I'm thinking about the families I've sat with whom I've seen struggle with diabetes when they've gotten the news that uh, they have to have an amputation uh, or will have to go on dialysis. Uh, one in four dollars in our healthcare system is spent on somebody with diabetes. And so if we cap the costs, not only do we help those individuals, I think we do a lot uh, in addressing our overall healthcare system. So, so the work that I do as a pastor and, and showing up and moving in the community and people are surprised to see me in the grocery store. One of the things I've learned as a pastor is, is you can't serve the people if you don't spend time with the people, if you don't love the people. And, um, uh, that, that's the work that I'm trying to do. I, I think there's no shortage of transactional politicians in Washington who are, who are so focused on the next election that they're not thinking about the next generation. It, it, that is what caused you to be unable to do anything after Columbine, after Sandy Hook. It's politicians thinking about themselves. So, yeah, I got, I got an election, but I'm going to stay focused on the people. You have, uh, you have a new book, A Way Out of No Way. And I'm, I want to ask you about that in title sure. in just one moment. But you talk about going back and preaching on Sundays. Is there a particular um, verse of scripture that gives you uh, solace, that keeps you going mm. in hard times when things seem hopeless to you? You, you shouldn't ask me about a single verse of scripture. I know, <laughs> I know you're a pastor, but give me give me your give me your top three. Look, and I, I I grew up I grew up in a household where even when we weren't quoting scripture, my parents sounded like they were quoting scripture. <laughs> all, all, always always in the King James English. You know, thou, thou shalt wash the dishes. <laughs> you know, let's, let's not smite thee with my rod and my staff. Um, but uh, look, I grew up in the South, but. Um, you know, in these, in these tough times, uh, I've been going back and uh, back again and again to that verse in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, where it says, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness overcometh it not. It is the recognition that the days are difficult, that the times are dark, and yet there's a light that pierces through, that breaks through. And um, I think uh, all of us ought to try to be part of that light.
So, where does the title come from, A Way Out of No Way? What is this from? Oh, it's deep in the culture of the black church. Um, you're not in a, in, in a black church for long before you hear somebody say, either from the pulpit or uh, in a song or a testimony that God makes a way out of no way. That, that, that is a kind of faith born of struggle, of, uh, of oppression, and yet keeping the faith and hoping against hope and getting up and putting one foot in front of the other and pressing on even when you're not exactly sure how, sure how you're going to get there. And it is a sense that as you make your way, God makes a way out of no way. We, we work in partnership with God and with others to do the good work. Your, um, your dear friend, John Lewis, was also one of the parishioners there. Yeah. What did his example mean to you? John Lewis is an enduring uh, inspiration for me. I met him when I was a college student. Uh, we had an event at, at uh, the school, and, and he showed up. And I don't remember what he said, but it was just his presence that meant so much. And then later, I became his pastor. Um, he reminds me in times like these that we have to keep the faith, that we have to um, continue to get in what he called good trouble. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had the honor of presiding over his funeral. Mm -hmm. And when I think about a young John Lewis crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge, wearing a trench coat, backpack, he didn't have any reason to believe that he could win. I, I sometimes wonder what was he thinking. Here, here is what I know. He was not thinking that one day at his funeral, three American presidents would show up at Ebenezer Church on both sides of the aisle. He wasn't thinking that he'd be the recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. I think he was probably just trying to stay alive that day so he could fight the next day. But somehow through uh, some stroke of destiny, Mingled with human determination, he managed to bend that arc a little bit closer towards justice. And that's our job, to keep bending that arc. And so when I think about him, even in times like this, who, who am I to give up? Who, who am I to be cynical in a moment like this? Uh, I take the long view and um, keep doing the work. Senator, thank you for being here. So good. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. His memoir, A Way Out of No Way, is available tomorrow. Senator Raphael Warnock, everybody. We'll be right back.